Hello, everybody. I'm Ben Gramico from InterNACHI, and this is a free NACHI TV webinar um, on a, um, a course that was developed by InterNACHI um, this month. Uh, today is March 28th, 2020, and we developed a course, a free online course about the COVID-19 virus. And so um, what we're going to do is log into the course and go over the course itself. Um, the course is online, so you can take the course. You don't have to be a member. It's open to everyone, not just InterNACHI members. It's open to the public. And let me show you how to do that. So you go to our main webpage, nachi.org, n-a-c-h-i.org, n-a-c-h-i.org. And there's a couple things here while I have you. Go under the More tab, and you can see a link to our school. So internachi.edu is our nationally accredited home inspector college, the only home inspector online college in the world. And um, that's where the course is. So I'll take you there. Um, also to grow your business, there's a tab to grow your business. If you click that and go down to the webinars and videos, that's where Nachi TV is, N-A-C-H-I dot TV. And I'm old enough to know what those things are on top of the TV. Um, and so you could register for a free online webinar or look at past webinars because we record everything. We're recording this one as well. So this is a free live webinar, but you may be watching it on YouTube as a video recording. You may be listening to it um, on our Home Inspector podcast as well. So thanks for joining in, watching, and listening. Go back to the main menu and you get started on our course. You go there and this is a list of all of our courses, but we have a search button here. So you type in COVID and there's the COVID course. You click that and you get to our first landing page. So this is the internet free online COVID-19 safety guidelines for home inspectors course. And this course is free and open to everyone, not just internet members. And the COVID logo is available for anyone who completes the course. And the logo is downloadable from within the course. And the goal of this course is to teach home inspectors on the best practices and inspection steps and safety guidelines to protect themselves. Now, many countries, states, provinces, local governments have responded by restricting many businesses from operating. According to the InterNACHI Code of Ethics, the internet team member shall comply with all government rules and requirements of the jurisdiction where he or she conducts business. The objectives are listed for the course. What's included in the course is there and the topics. And we're going to go over the entire course and learn about these topics. So how do you do that? You click the green button. So let's take the course now. And this is the first page of the course. This is March 28th again. Um, the course was developed in this month of 2020 by InterNACHI, and we'll do our best to keep the course content updated with information from the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other government energy, uh, agencies. So you can check back every once in a while for updated information. And this is what I'd like to see. Um, People, real estate professionals, contractors, showing others that they have hired a home inspector who adheres to the COVID-19 safety standards developed by InterNACHI. So before you take the course's final exam, a page of information within the course may be updated. And we update the course every day almost. If this happens, the course system will notify you and require you to visit the updated pages before you take the final exam. And the information contained in this course is intended to advise and guide the home inspector. It's not a standard. It's not a regulation. It contains recommendations that are advisory in nature, informational in content, and are intended to assist home inspectors so that they can work in a safe, healthful workplace and environment. And we encourage employers of home inspectors to provide their employees 
with a workplace free from recognized hazards and a set of guidelines to keep them safe. If you wanted to download the logo, here's the link. You just click the download logo link and you get to our logos page, which is filled with a bunch of logos for internet sheet numbers to use. Back to the course. Here's a little video on how to progress through the course. Here's a page where we identify you. You can download a PDF of the course. We provide this for people who like to learn by reading, maybe taking notes, printing things out, and reading online in a book form. And this course was developed by Internet G, but its content was based primarily upon the following resources the Home Inspection Standards of Practice, Safe Practices for the Home Inspector course, that's a good free online course, and other um, websites of information from the CDC um, and the World Ho uh, Health Organization and other places, including all the states. So all the states in the United States and all the provinces in Canada each have their own health department. And we have links to every state in the United States and every province so you can get more information where you are. Symptoms of COVID-19. Well, infection with SARS-CoV-2, and that's the virus, the SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes COVID-19, can cause illness ranging from mild to severe and in some cases can be fatal. Symptoms can include a fever, a cough, and shortness of breath. Some people infected with the virus have reported experiencing other non-respiratory symptoms. And other people, referred to as asymptomatic cases, have experienced no symptoms at all. And according to the CDC, symptoms may appear in as few as two days or as long as 14 days after exposure. Reported illnesses have ranged from mild to severe and even death. And again, the symptoms may appear two to 14 days after exposure based on the incubation period of MERS-CoV viruses. And Harvard Health um, says that the increasing, there's increasing evidence that suggests that a loss of sense of smell known medically as anosmia has been a symptom. Um, reported. So again, the symptoms of coronavirus disease, 2019, that's where the 19 comes from. Fever, cough, and shortness of breath. And symptoms may appear two to 14 days. And you want to get medical advice if you've been in close contact with a person known to have COVID-19, or if you live in a community where you know that there's spread. And there are also emergency warning signs, trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion or inability to arouse, bluish lips or face. And this is not an all-inclusive list. And please consult your medical provider for any other symptoms that are severe or concerning to you. How does COVID-19 COVID spread? Although the first human cases of COVID-19 likely have resulted from exposure to infected animals, infected people can spread the SARS-CoV-2 to other people. The virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person, including people who are in close contact with one another, and that's six feet or two meters, 1.8 meters. So it's six feet, two meters. That's like uh, two arms length. So if you're standing next to somebody, there's three feet, you know, the other person extended with an arm, that's another three feet. It may be possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or object that has the SARS-CoV-2 virus on it and then touching their own mouth, eyes or nose, but this is not thought to be the primary way that the virus spreads. People are thought to be the most contagious when they are most symptomatic, experiencing a high fever, a cough, shortness of breath, 
some spread might be possible before people show symptoms. There have been reports of this asymptomatic transmission with this new coronavirus, but this is not thought to be the main way the virus spreads. Although many countries have implemented public health measures to limit the spread of the virus, it's likely that some person-to-person -person transmission will still continue. Can someone spread the virus without being sick? Yep, people are thought to be the most contagious when they're most symptomatic. Some spread might be possible before people show any symptoms. There have been reports of this occurring with the new coronavirus, but this is not, to, uh, this is not thought to be the main way the virus spreads. How about spread from contact with contaminated surfaces or objects? It may be possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth, nose, and eyes. But this is not thought to be the main way the virus spreads. How easily the virus spreads? How easily it spreads from person to person may vary. Some viruses are highly contagious, that spreads easily like measles, while other viruses don't spread easily. Another factor is whether the spread is sustained, which is um, spreading continually without stopping. The virus that causes COVID-19 seems to be spreading easily and sustainably in the community. This is called community spread in some affected geographical areas. So community spread means people have been affected with the virus in an area including some who are not sure how or where they became infected. And the CDC, the United States CDC, provides updated information. Steps all inspectors can take to reduce the risk of exposure. So this section of the course describes basic steps that every home inspection business can take to reduce the risk of an inspector's exposure to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 in the workplace and in the houses being inspected. Later in the course, including those focusing on job classifications, provide specific recommendations for businesses and inspectors with specific risk categories. In those categories, there's four. There's very high, high, medium, and low, and home inspectors are thought to be in the low risk category. Medium exposure risk, risk jobs include those that require frequent and or close contact, again, six feet, two meters, contact with other people who may be infected with the SARS-CoV-2. Home inspectors are not required to be in frequent or in close contact with other people who may be infected. A home inspector can perform a home inspection alone. It's possible to conduct home inspections and operate a home inspection business without being near anyone else. So the picture shows possibly your client or a real estate agent, a homeowner, a home seller, watching you perform a home inspection with a live video chat, or maybe summarizing your observations that you have written in your report, which you'll electronically send to your client. There's no reason to be within six feet or two feet, uh, two meters of anyone. So inspect alone and communicate your inspection observations from a safe distance. Here are some basic steps home inspectors can take to help avoid getting ill from performing your home inspections. Then the best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus. Inspect alone. The virus is thought to be spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close contact with one another, about six feet, two meters and through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly inhaled into the lungs. Ideally, a home inspection would be performed at an unoccupied or vacant house. Usually home inspectors are doing their work alone. Uh, usually home inspectors are doing their work with their clients. And while the house is occupied, or maybe the, the seller's agent is there and the buyer's agent is walking with their client, with you, maybe some family members and kids, that has all changed. Again, if you are provided that opportunity to continue your business by the state or local government. 
Take steps to protect yourself. Wash your hands often. Wash your hands frequently using soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after you've been in a public place or after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. If soap and water are not readily available, use a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Cover all surfaces of your hands and rub them together until they feel dry. Also, avoid touching your eyes and nose and mouth with unwashed hands. Be sure to wash your hands before and after the home inspection and even during. Avoid close contact with other people, especially if they're sick. Put distance between yourself and other people if COVID-19 is spreading in your community. This is especially important for people who are at a higher risk of getting sick, such as the elderly and people with underlying health issues. Ask your clients if they're willing to consider not showing up at the inspection. Keep your distance. Social distancing remains, means remaining out of congregate settings, I like a little crowd. Avoid gatherings of people and maintaining distance, six feet, two meters from other people. Video record the inspection. There are many home inspectors who will video record the inspection for their absent clients. I have a software and I can use my mobile device and I can take pictures with my mobile device while I'm writing the report, while I'm inspecting. And I can also shoot video as well. And for an absentee client, I tend to film an entire summary, a summarizing inspection, a review, overall review of the entire house. I'll inspect it first and then I'll do a video for my client. And if my client wants to see me live, that's very easy too. Their clients can then play the inspection video from the comfort and safety of their own homes. Use a live video chat or FaceTime during the inspection. Home inspectors can use a live video chat or FaceTime with their absent clients during their home inspection. Facebook Messenger, iPhone FaceTime, and Google Duo are very good options. Take steps to protect others. Stay home if you are feeling sick, except to get medical care if needed. Learn what to do if you are sick. The CDC recommends that people who have symptoms of acute respiratory illness should self-quarantine until they are free of a fever, which is a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 37.8 degrees Celsius or greater using an oral thermometer, as well as those who exhibit signs of a fever or any other symptoms. Now these recommendations are changing almost daily, so be sure to check with national and local news resources and medical experts for self-quarantine recommendations and other tips to prevent the spread of the disease. Home inspectors who work for a larger company should notify their supervisor and stay home if they feel sick. When you perform a home inspection, ask the homeowner or their agent to have the current occupants leave the home during the home inspection process to protect others. Coughs and sneezes. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when you cough or sneeze or use the inside of your elbow. Throw used tissues in the trash immediately. Immediately wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If that's not available, clean your hands with a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Wear a face mask if you're sick. Now, if you're sick, don't do home inspections. <laughs> you should wear a mask, a face mask, when you're around other people if you're sick, like sharing a room or a vehicle, and before you enter a healthcare provider's office. If you're not able to wear a face mask, for example, because it causes you trouble breathing, then you should do your best to cover your coughs and sneezes. People who are caring for you should also wear a face mask if they enter your room. Learn what to do if you are sick. If you are not sick, you don't need to wear a face mask unless you are caring for someone who is sick and they are not able to wear a face mask. Face masks are in short supply and should be saved for the caregivers. Clean and disinfect. Clean and disinfect frequently touched services daily, and this could include, among many other things, your inspection vehicle, 
the door handle to your vehicle, the steering wheel, inspection tools and equipment, your phone if you use it to write inspection reports or communicate with your clients. Finally, stay up to date. And the CDC website has really good information that's updated. And to move through an InterNACHI course, simply click next page or previous page. Develop an infectious disease, disease preparedness and response plan. If one doesn't exist already, develop one to help guide and protect actions against viruses like COVID-19. Stay updated of guidances from federal, state, and local, tribal, and territorial health agencies and consider how to incorporate those recommendations into workplace-specific plans for your business. Plans should, plan should consider and address the level of risk associated with virus work sites and job tasks home inspectors perform at those sites. Such considerations may include where, how, and to what sources of SARS-CoV-2 might home inspectors be exposed to, including the general public, homeowners, occupants, real estate agents, neighbors, contractors, inspectors, and coworkers, and also sick individuals or those at particularly high risk of infection, like international travelers, non-occupational risk factor factors at home and at community settings, Inspectors' individual risk factors, such as older age, presence of chronic medical conditions, controls necessary to address those risks. So those considerations should be taken care of, should be considered. <laughs> Follow state, federal, local, tribal, territorial recommendations regarding the development of contingency plans for situations that may arise as a result of outbreaks, such as worker absenteeism, interrupted schedules, canceled appointments, restricted access or movements or delays, the need for social distancing, staggered work shifts, rescheduling and delaying inspection services, delivering services using video chat and remote communication technologies and other exposure reducing, reducing measures. Options for conducting essential operations as a reduced workforce with a reduced workforce, including cross-chaining employees across different jobs in order to continue your home inspection operations. For example, if a home inspector gets sick, can another home inspector within the company take over their scheduled jobs and responsibilities? Can you subcontract out to a home inspection friendly competitor? If a lead trainer in the home inspection company gets sick, can you move towards enrolling in online training such as internachi.edu? Your plan should consider and address the other steps that employers can take to reduce the risk of inspector exposure to SARS-CoV-2 in their workplace and properties being inspected, described in the following pages. So prepare to implement basic infection prevention measures. For most inspection businesses, Protecting the home inspectors will depend upon emphasizing basic infection prevention measures. As appropriate, all home inspection businesses should implement good hygiene and infection control practices for their inspectors and employees, including promoting frequent and thorough hand washing and utilizing various places to wash your hands in the workplace or office or the home being inspected. And if soap and running water are not immediately available, have an alcohol-based hand rub that contains at least 60% alcohol. Be careful when touching the sink handles. You may want to use a tissue to grasp the sink handle or the soap dispenser. Be aware of touching high touch surfaces while inspecting a house, including door handles and frequently used components of a house, such as a thermostat, wall switches, kitchen and bathroom fixtures, the toilets, garage door openers, windows, etc. Transmission of novel coronavirus to persons from surfaces contaminated with the virus has not been documented as of yesterday too much. Transmission of coronavirus occurs much more commonly through respiratory droplets than through 
fomites. Current evidence suggests that novel coronavirus may remain viable for hours to days on services made from a variety of materials. Some inspectors wear disposable gloves. I've seen that on Facebook and Instagram. Throw the gloves away into a trash container immediately after the inspection and wash your hands immediately. If no gloves are worn, be sure to wash your hands. So you get the virus into your body through your holes, your two eyes, nose, mouth. It's not through your hands. But wearing disposable gloves would be a good idea to remind yourself not to touch your face. If you're going to use gloves, remove them properly and dispose of them in the trash immediately. Encourage everyone to stay home if they're sick. This includes all employees of a home inspection business, clients, homeowners, home sellers, occupants, renters, family members who desire to attend an inspection, neighbors visiting the house being inspected, real estate agents, and that's the seller's agent, buyer's agent, broker, or other representatives, and contractors. If a home inspector is feeling sick, remember cough, fever, difficulty breathing, the inspector needs to stay home. Stay home if you feel sick or have symptoms. People who are mildly ill with COVID-19 are able to recover at home. Do not leave except to get medical care. If you think you've been exposed to COVID-19 and develop a fever and symptoms such as a cough or difficulty breathing, call your healthcare provider for medical advice. Employees or inspectors who have symptoms of acute respiratory illness are recommended to stay at home and not come to work and do not perform home inspections until they're fever free. Employees and inspectors should notify their supervisor and stay home if they're sick. There are some people who do not show symptoms. Asymptomatic is a term used to describe an individual who does not currently show symptoms of the disease. Asymptomatic individuals may develop symptoms of the disease at a later point in time if and when the disease onsets. You want to avoid close contact. Implement a community non-pharmaceutical intervention, that's NPI, such as social distancing. Create ways to create, to increase the distance between people in settings where people commonly come into close contact with one another. Keep separated from your coworkers and other people. You don't know who is sick has symptoms, or is asymptomatic. Social distancing remains, means remaining out of congregate settings in a crowd, avoiding mass gatherings, and maintaining distance six feet, two meters from others when possible. Don't shake hands with other people, including your agents, your clients, their agents, or the home occupant. Don't feel bad about not shaking hands. You're not being disrespectful. You're trying to keep everyone healthy and safe. Advise employees and inspectors to check themselves for symptoms of acute respiratory illness or high temperatures, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher before starting their workday and notify their supervisor and stay home if they're sick. You can use a thermometer or an infrared certified inspector can use an infrared camera. I've got one here if a thermometer is not available and they're hard to come by. Cover your cough. That's respiratory etiquette, including covering coughs and sneezes. Turn your head downward, sneeze and cough into your elbow. Don't sneeze into your hand. If you are not sick, you do not need to wear a face mask, according to the CDC, unless you are caring for someone who is sick and they're not able to wear a face mask. Face masks may be in short supply and should be saved for the healthcare providers and caregivers. Provide people with access to tissues and trash receptacles. So bring tissues into your inspection vehicle. Home inspectors should have a trash container in their inspection vehicle. If you use a tissue during an inspection, throw it away in a trash bag or receptacle immediately. Employers should explore whether they can establish policies and practices such as flexible work schedules, for example, office managers working from home instead of in the office, 
and flexible inspection work hours, such as staggered home inspections, to increase the physical distance among employees and between employees and others if state and local health authorities recommend the use of social distancing strategies. Inspect alone. Don't inspect a house with another home inspector, if at all possible. If you have to schedule more than one inspector to inspect the same house, drive separately and inspect separately. Travel in separate vehicles to and from the inspection site. Inspect separated different floors, different systems, and not in the same room at the same time. The best inspection software provides for multiple inspectors writing the same inspection report at the same time. Ask the homeowner and occupants to leave the home prior to the inspection. Ask the, home, or ask the real estate agents to not enter the home while you're inspecting. Have it open for you. Discourage inspectors from using other inspectors' phones, desks, office spaces, or other inspection equipment and work tools when possible. Don't share devices. Don't share inspection tools. Don't share your phone. Avoid touching your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. If you're inspecting, try using the lesser dominant hand while inspecting. I'm right-handed, so I would use my left hand to do everything, like touch the normal operating controls. If you're right-handed, try using your left hand to do most of the inspection, which may include touching the normal operating controls. You may be less apt to touch your face with your less dominant hand. I'm very apt to touch my face with my dominant hand, my right hand. So I want to keep that clean and use my left hand, less dominant, to do all the inspection. Maintain regular housekeeping practices, including routine cleaning and disinfecting of surfaces, equipment, and other elements of the work environment. Home inspectors shouldn't be inspected, expected to clean houses, but a home inspector may wipe down certain surfaces prior to inspecting or using them. For example, a wiped and cleaned kitchen counter may be safely used for an inspector's computer equipment. And when choosing chemicals, choose the right chemicals listed by the EPA. So I have a couple of questions. So Greg says that he took his course on Thursday and already printed my certificate of completion. Fantastic. That's great. Um, we're con constantly updating information within the course and you have free unlimited access to take the course again and again and even download an updated certificate of completion. Does this count as taking the course? Nope. We're a home inspector college, so you have to go online. You can't, take, you can't get any credit by simply watching a video or attending a webinar that is college credit. So you have to go through the online accredited course and get a certificate of completion. Um, the course will also have quiz questions. So we won't be doing quiz questions in the video. You can't get any credit. For example, um, this audio uh, will be uploaded to our Home Inspector podcast. So you can't get any credit by just listening to the, the webinar that we're doing right now. And Justin says, some of this is repetitive. Some of this is repetitive. It sure is. It sure is. Uh, any other questions? I completed the COVID course the day you announced it. Um, so it would be in my profile and it's not. Well, um, that's an easy fix. Let me log in as you and um, I can download it for you or I can get somebody to help you. We're all on the contact page, natchi.org slash contact, or go to the any natchi.org um, web page, and we're on the contact page. And you can scroll down and just ask just about anybody to help you. Okay. Let's continue. Let me see, a little bit more coffee. So how do you identify someone who's sick? And what if you need to isolate them? Well, developing policies and procedures for prompt identification and isolation of sick people, if appropriate, are the following. Prompt identification and isolation of potentially infectious individuals 
are critical steps in protecting inspectors, clients, occupants, homeowners, real estate agents, and others at the house being inspected. Home inspection business owners should inform and encourage employees and inspectors to self-monitor for signs and symptoms of COVID-19 if they suspect possible exposure. Business owners should develop policies and procedures for employees and inspectors to report when they are sick or experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. Where appropriate, employers should develop policies and procedures for immediately isolating people who have signs and or symptoms of COVID-19 and train employees to Im implement them. Potentially infectious people should move to a location away from the employees, inspectors, clients, homeowners, occupants, and real estate professionals. If a home inspector feels sick, they should go home. Apologize and excuse yourself immediately. Grab your computer and equipment and tools, leave the house immediately, go to your inspection vehicle, call someone to notify them, and ask for assistance or advice. If a home, a home inspector suspects someone of having a sickness or symptoms of COVID-19, especially during a home inspection, feel free to protect yourself and leave the home being inspected. Take steps to limit the spread of respiratory secretions of a person who may have COVID-19. If you're working with another inspector, for example, and they're not feeling well, you may want to offer the other inspector, the other person, a face mask, if feasible and available, and then separate each other, separate from each other. The inspector who is not feeling well should immediately go home. Remember, a face mask, also called a surgical mask, a procedure mask, or other similar terms, on a sick person should not be confused with PPE, personal protection equipment, for a home inspector. The mask acts to contain potentially infectious rep respiratory secretions at the source, the person's nose or mouth. General safety precautions. Restrict the number of people in the office of the home inspection business. It's, it's best, if possible, for everyone to work from home. Restrict the number of people at the property and the house being inspected. Inspect alone. Ask everyone to leave the house being inspected. Have it open before you show up at the house. If someone feels compelled to be at the house, ask them to stay outside or in their vehicle. Ask the homeowner, seller, occupant to leave the house before you arrive to inspect the house and ask the real estate agents to not attend the inspection. Keep your distance. Social distancing means remaining out of congregate settings, avoiding gatherings, and maintaining distance six feet, two meters from others when possible. Developing, implementing, and communicating flexible workplaces and protections. This is important for employers to protect their employees and inspectors. Actively encourage sick inspectors and employees to stay home. Informed employees and inspectors should feel safe at work. Ensure that sick leave policies are flexible and consistent with public health guidance and that employees are aware of these policies. Talk with companies that provide your inspection business with contract inspectors or temporary employees about the importance of sick employees staying home and encourage them to develop a non-punitive leave policy. Do not require a healthcare provider's note for employees and inspectors who are sick with acute respiratory illness to validate their illness or to return to work. As healthcare provider offices and medical facilities may be extremely busy and are not able to provide such documentation in a timely way. Maintain flexible policies that permit employees and your inspectors to stay home to care for a sick family member. Employers should be aware that more employees and inspectors may need to stay home to care for sick children or other sick family, family members than is usual. Recognize that employees and inspectors with ill family members may need to stay home to care for them. Be aware of employees' concerns about pay, leave, safety, health, and other issues that may arise during infectious disease outbreaks. 
provide adequate, usable, and appropriate training, education, and information about business essential job functions, tasks, and worker health and safety, including proper hygiene policies and practices, and the use of any workplace controls. Work with insurance companies and state local health agencies to provide information to workers and customers about medical care in the event of a COVID-19 outbreak in your area. Occupational safety and health professionals use a framework called hierarchy of controls to select ways of controlling workplace hazards. In other words, the best way to control a hazard is to systematically remove it from the workplace rather than relying on inspectors to reduce their exposure. So the idea behind this hierarchy is that the control methods at the top of the graphic, if you're listening, um, we have a, a graphic of hierarchy of controls. And at the top, there's elimination, then it steps down, substitution, then down engineering controls, then down to administrative controls, and the lowest is personal protection equipment. So the most effective is elimination. That's physically removing the hazard from the area. And then an engineering control is isolating people from the hazard. And then administrative control for um, employers change the way people work and PPE, which is protecting the worker with per personal protective equipment. But elimination is the most effective during a COVID-19 outbreak, when it may not be possible to eliminate the hazard, the most effective protection measures are listed from most effective to least effective. Engineering controls, administrative controls, safe work practices, which is a, a type of administrative control and PPE. There are advantages and disadvantages to each type of control measure when considering the ease of implementation, effectiveness, and cost. In most cases, a combination of control measures will be necessary to protect employees. Again, the best way is to inspect alone, away from everyone else, and also implement some control measures to protect yourself. Now, engineering controls are not typically applicable to home inspection businesses or performing home inspections. They're like installing high efficiency air filters and installing physical barriers like plastic sneeze guards and drive-through windows uh, for certain types of businesses. Administrative controls, well, that requires action by the home inspector or the employer. Typically, administrative controls are changes in work policy or procedures to reduce or minimize exposure to a hazard. And there's examples of administrative controls for SARS-CoV-2, which include encouraging sick employees to stay home and home inspectors to stay home. Minimizing contact among employees and inspectors and clients by replacing your face-to-face -face everyday meetings and performing inspections with others in close proximity to the inspector with performing inspections in unoccupied homes, virtual communications between inspectors and clients, and implementing telework for employees of home inspection businesses. Establishing alternating workdays or extra shifts that reduce the total number of employees in a home inspection business office at a given time, allowing them to maintain distance from one another while maintaining a full work week. Discontinuing non-essential travel to locations with ongoing COVID-19 outbreaks. For example, a home inspector should not travel to drop off a printed home inspection report. Home inspectors should be using report writing software that electronically sends to the client the inspection report by email or a cloud-based download. Regularly check CDC travel warnings and levels at the CDC site. Developing emergency communication plans, including a forum for answering inspectors' concerns and internet-based communications. InterNACHI inspection community is open to everyone, home inspectors, members, real estate agents, contractors, non-members at the forum nachi.org slash forum, N-A-C-H-I dot org slash forum, F-O-R-U-M. 
providing employees and inspectors with up-to-date education and training on COVID-19 risk factors and protective behavior, behaviors. Now, InterNACHI has provided several resources and they're listed here in the course. COVID-19 Guide for Home Inspectors. And that's a guide. And I, if I were running a business for a home inspector, I would print out this guide and have it available or distribute it to my employees and my inspectors. Um, there's a guide, COVID-19 guide for commercial property inspectors. And this was developed by ccpia.org. And that's a certified commercial property inspectors association. And this is a great guide for commercial property inspectors. And I would refer everyone who is working at my commercial property inspection business to this guide. The COVID guide, the, I'm sorry, the COVID-19 safety guidelines for home inspectors course. And that's the course that we're reviewing right now. The COVID-19 safety guidelines logo so that others know that you have been trained and you will abide by or adhere to the safety standards and recommendations. How uh, I would send all of my employees and my inspectors an article, how home inspectors are about to enjoy an increase in demand article. There's a lot of great information in that article. There it is there. Another resource, we have InterNACHI Inspector Mentors. So if you want to find a mentor, we have peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences for both inspectors who need additional assistance and for experienced inspectors who are interested in helping newer inspectors out. So you can find a mentor, and if you want to participate as a mentor, you can as well. You have to qualify to be a mentor. The Internet Inspection Community Online Forum, where you can talk to other inspectors, particularly in your area, if there's community spread or there are business restrictions. Inspector PPE and inspection equipment provided by Inspector Outlet. For example, we have the ultimate shoe cover for certified professional inspectors. We have a safe practices for the home inspector textbook. So we have a, a textbook. If you like reading textbooks, you can read it online or as a print book. And we have a safe practices for the home inspector course. That's a free online course available to everyone. It's free and online and open to everyone, not just InterNACHI members. Training employees and inspectors who should use protective clothing and equipment on how to put it on, how to use and wear it, and how to take it off correctly, including in the context of their current and potential duties. The training materials should be easy to understand and available in the appropriate language and literacy level for all employees and inspectors. So if you are um, wearing a face mask, if your inspectors wear face masks, or if your inspectors like to wear um, disposable gloves, um, I would go to InterNACHI's free online safe practices for the home inspector course. Let me click the button. Again, it's open to everyone, not just InterNACHI members. And here's um, a whole chapter on personal protection equipment, PPE, about the clothing, the footwear, the headwear, the gloves, the eyewear, the face, the mask, respirator, the full face, um, all these other uh, resources. And also you can ask them to watch the video on how to um, properly put on, take off, uh, and also fit a re respirator. So InterNACHI has a lot of great resources, all free, all online for your inspectors and employees. Safe work practices are types of administrative controls that include procedures for safe and proper work used to reduce the duration, frequency, or intensity of exposure to a hazard. Here are some examples of safe work practices for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. 
providing resources in a work environment that promotes personal hygiene. For example, employers of home inspectors should provide tissues, no touch trash cans, hand soap, alcohol-based hand rubs containing at least 60% alcohol, disinfectants, and disposable towels for employees and inspectors to clean their work surfaces at the office, inspection vehicles, their computers and phones, and inspection tools and equipment. Requiring regular hand washing or using alcohol-based hand rubs, home inspectors should always wash their hands when they are visibly soiled, or especially when they're visibly soiled during an inspection, and also after removing any PPE. If you wear disposable gloves during an inspection, remove them properly. You can get trained on how to remove a glove and dispose of those gloves into the trash container, a no touch trash can, can immediately and wash your hands after removing your gloves. Post hand washing signs in restrooms of the offices of home inspection businesses is a, an example of a workplace practice. Speaking of washing your hands, here's a video on how to wash your hands. If you are listening to our Home Inspector podcast, obviously you won't be able to see the video and there's no audio. Warm or cold water, either one is fine as long as it's clean. Bar or uh, bar soap or liquid, either is fine. Does the soap have to be antimicrobial? No, plain soap and water works just as well. What if you don't have soap or access to water? Well, we've already done that bit of training. I, ideally, you would use 60% um, at least alcohol-based hand wipes or sanitizers. How long do you need to scrub when washing your hands? 20 seconds is most effective. Do you have to clean under your fingernails? Yes, germs like to hide under your fingernails. Towel or air dry, either is fine, but if you're using a towel, make sure it's clean. Should I use a paper towel to turn off the faucet? There isn't much scientific evidence about this, but if you're concerned about getting germs on your hands, you can use a paper towel to turn off a faucet or open door handles. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 6% alcohol. And wash your hands before eating or after using the restroom. Protect yourself and others by washing your hands with soap and water. And that was a video by the CDC. PPE for home inspectors. Home inspectors should not be near within six feet or two meters of anyone who is known to be or suspected of being infected with SARS-CoV-2. While engineering and administrative controls are considered more effective in minimizing exposure to SARS-CoV-2, PPE may also be needed to help reduce your risk and prevent certain exposures. While correctly using PPE can help prevent some exposures, it should, be, should not be taken in place of other prevention strategies. Here's some examples of PPE for home inspectors. Gloves, goggles, face shields, face masks, and respiratory protection when appropriate. During an outbreak of an infectious disease such as COVID-19, recommendations for PPE specific to home inspection tasks may change depending on geographic location, updated risk assessments for workers, those four risk categories we mentioned before, and information on PPE effectiveness in preventing the spread of COVID-19. Employers should check the OSHA and CDC websites for regularly updated information. All types of PPE for inspectors must be selected based upon the hazard to the inspector, properly fitted and periodically refitted as applicable, consistently and properly worn when required, regularly inspected, maintained and replaced as necessary, properly removed 
cleaned and stored and disposed of to avoid contamination of yourself, others, and the environment. Many home inspectors are using disposable gloves, wearing them during the inspection, and throwing them into the trash immediately after the inspection. Wash your hands after you immediately re remove the gloves. Wash your hands a lot. Employers should provi provide their home inspectors with PPE needed to keep them safe while performing their jobs. The types of PPE required during a COVID-19 outbreak will be based upon the risk of being infected with SARS COVID-2 while working and job tasks that may lead to exposure. Home inspectors should not be working in environments that require respirators. Again, home inspectors should not be near within six feet or two meters of anyone who is known to be or suspected of being infected with SARS-CoV-2. Home inspectors should not be putting themselves and others at risk. And here's a video for a respirator. And I hope you can hear the sound. When you must wear a respirator to protect yourself against airborne contaminants in your workplace, it is very important to follow proper procedures for putting it on and taking it off. The process of putting on and taking off your respirator is also referred to as donning and doffing. Respirator manufacturers supply instructions on how to properly don and doff, put on and take off, each respirator they produce. The manufacturer also supplies instructions on how to properly conduct a user seal check. A user seal check is a way to verify that the respirator has been properly positioned on your face to assure a proper seal. Sometimes workers confuse the term user seal check with the term fit test, which is different. A user seal check is not a substitute for a fit test which is a more involved process that uses a test agent or instrument to verify the respirator's fit. A fit test must be performed before you wear a respirator for the first time and at least annually thereafter. A user seal check must be performed each time you put on a respirator to check that it has been donned correctly. Remember, always follow the respirator manufacturer's instructions for the specific respirator model that you are using. Here are some general instructions for properly donning and doffing and properly conducting a user seal check for the two most common types of respirators. Let's begin with general instructions for a disposable filtering face piece respirator, which is often referred to as an N95 or a dust mask. Inspect the respirator, including the straps, for tears or damage. If you find any damage to the respirator, replace it. If your respirator comes out of its original container folded flat, open the folds fully following the manufacturer's instructions. Using one hand, place the respirator on your face with the nose piece at your fingertips, allowing the headbands to hang freely. The nose piece should span and cover the bridge of your nose and the respirator should cup your chin. Pull the top strap over your head, resting it high at the back of your head. Pull the bottom strap over your head and position it around your neck and below your ears. Be sure not to crisscross the straps. Make sure that your mouth and nose are covered by the respirator. If the nose piece has a metal nose piece or strip, use both hands to mold the nose strip to conform to the shape of your nose by pushing inward while moving your fingertips down along both sides of the nose piece. Next, conduct a user seal check. It's essential to follow the manufacturer's user seal check instructions because the manufacturer knows the best method for checking their respirator. Generally speaking, the manufacturer's instructions are based on covering the surface of the respirator, usually with your hands, so that air is prevented from passing through the filtering face piece. A positive pressure seal check is performed by gently exhaling to see if the face piece bulges slightly. 
for a negative pressure seal check, take a quick deep breath to see if the face piece collapses slightly. During either test, if air leaks out between your face and the respirator's face seal, the respirator may not fit your face properly. One way that you can identify leakage is if you feel air blowing through the seal onto your face or eyes. If you feel leakage, readjust the fit of your respirator and check the seal again. If you cannot achieve a proper seal, you are not protected and should not enter a hazardous area. See your supervisor to determine what the problem may be. When you're finished wearing the respirator, carefully remove it without touching the exterior because the exterior may be contaminated. Discard your respirator according to your company's procedures. Now let's explore the general instructions for properly donning and doffing and properly conducting a user seal check for a half face piece elastomeric respirator. And that's where we'll stop um, because I used to, um, I, I still wear those half face pieces for going into crawl spaces and attics. But I think we're going to stop there because um, home inspectors, you really shouldn't be needing to wear a half piece respirator for performing a home inspection anyways. Okay, so we're almost approaching near the end of the course. We're going to go over the four classifications of exposure. Um, occupational exposure. And then um, the last section is how there are four ways to have a positive impact on your community. We'll um, end with something positive. And I'm looking, um, Scott notices that uh, my coffee cup is dirty. It sure is, man. I've been drinking coffee all night long in order to prepare for this webinar. Um, Elizabeth, shares something I learned from my kids preschool. If you live with others, keep separate hand towels for each person. Yep. Um, and cuts um, can transmit any germ. Yep. And so if all um, if you are on the live zoom webinar, you get to see uh, Elizabeth and um, her sharings. They're, they're very good. Thanks, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Let's see, questions. Kirk asks, is a home inspection an essential service in Colorado? Um, they don't call it an essential service, but they mention real estate services. So you wanna take a look at the, um, I'm not an attorney, you don't wanna ask me, um, or anybody on InterNACHI staff. So you want to um, ask your business attorney about what the state law or local law says and how does it apply to your business. Um, if you're running a home inspection business, you need a home inspection business attorney, um, a business attorney and consultant. So Colorado, we posted on our online inspection community forum about Colorado and other states. You may, may want to go on our forum. Um, sorry, the, the audio cuts in and out for you, Mark andre Okay. Yep. Technology is great when it all works. Okay, let's finish up the, the webinar and the course. So there are four classifications. Worker risk of expo occupational exposure to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 during an outbreak may vary from very high to high, medium, or lower caution risk. The level of risk depends in part on the industry type, need, and requirement for contact within six feet or two meters of people known to be or suspected of being infected with SARS-CoV-2 or requirement for repeated or extended contact with persons known to be or suspected of being infected with SARS-CoV-2. To help employers determine appropriate precautions, the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, that's OSHA, a great resource, has divided job tasks into four risk exposure levels very high, high, medium, and lower risk. And in the webinar and also the course, we have a, a pyramid um, graphic for occupational risk pyramid for COVID-19. Uh, very high is at the top, high below that, down medium, and at the bottom, lower risk. 
The occupational risk pyramid shows the four exposure risk levels in the shape of a pyramid to represent the probable distribution of risk. Most home inspectors will likely fall in the lower exposure risk caution, exposure risk levels. So there's a picture of a, a healthcare provider. Very high exposure risk jobs are those with high potential for exposure to known or suspected sources of COVID-19 during specific medical, post-mortem, or laboratory procedures. Workers in this category include healthcare workers, healthcare or laboratory personnel, and morgue workers. High exposure risk. High exposure risk jobs are those with high potential for exposure to known or suspected sources of COVID-19. Workers in this category include healthcare delivery and support staff, like doctors, nurses, and other hospital staff who must enter patients' rooms. Medical transport workers, like ambulance vehicle operators, moving known or suspected COVID-19 patients in enclosed vehicles. Mortuary workers. Let's go to medium exposure risk. Medium exposure risk jobs includes those that require frequent and or close contact with people who may be infected with SARS-CoV-2 but are not known or suspected COVID-19 patients. Hmm. In areas without ongoing community transmission, workers in this risk group may have frequent contact with travelers who may return from international locations with widespread COVID-19 transmissions. In areas where there is ongoing community transmission, workers in this category may have contact with the general public. And the examples are in schools, high population density work environments, and some high volume retail settings. So the inspector in the middle there, he is at risk. There is an inspector using a, a wall receptacle tester and their internet GID badge. Lower risk, parenthetical caution, jobs are those that do not require contact with people known to be or suspected of being infected with SARS-CoV-2, nor frequent close contact with six feet, two meters of the general public. Home inspectors in this category may have minimal occupational contact with the general public and other coworkers. Home inspectors can perform their work alone without requiring any contact with anyone else. Now, there are four things home inspectors can do to have a positive impact in their community during this COVID-19 pandemic. And the four ways include keeping your clients in mind, keeping your real estate agents in mind, improving yourself and your home inspection business, and the check-in with your fellow home inspectors. This article also makes recommendations on what home inspectors can do after the COVID-19 pandemic is over. And this article is a fantastic article written by and published by the Cozy Coats for Kids organization. And I, if I was a home inspector, I would want to read this article. If I was an employer, I would send this article to all of my employees and home inspectors. So good job, Cozy Coats for Kids, for writing that article. For more information, there are many resources out there. There's the Occupational Safety and Health, and Health Administration. That's OSHA.gov. There's the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website, that's cdc.gov. And there's NIOSH, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health website. Um, in the course itself, the COVID-19 Safety Guidelines for Home Inspectors course, there is um, much more information that you can take a look at. Um, OSHA's on-site consultation programs offers no cost and confidential advice to small and medium sized businesses in all states. So you may want to take a look at that. And then there's OSHA. Um, they partner up with 26 OSHA training institute education centers 
at 37 locations throughout the United States to deliver courses on OSHA standards and occupational safety and health topics to thousands of students every year. So you want to take a look at that website. And I'll make sure that these links, um, someone mentioned that the, there was a link that's not working. And I apologize for that. I'll go back and make sure everything is working. And then there's OSHA educational materials. OSHA has many types of educational materials to assist employers and workers in finding and preventing workplace hazards. You want to take a look at those. Um, they even have books. And um, we have a way to contact OSHA if you wanted to contact to help ensure um, your worker's safety. And then there's a quiz. I don't know if you want to go over the quiz or not. Let's see if this works. Ready? Are you ready for a quiz question? You're going to help me out. I'm not going to answer these quiz questions. So if you're not going to answer the quiz questions, you're just going to stand here and uh, look at each other. Sound good? Okay. Help me out. Ready? Okay. According to the CDC, symptoms of COVID-19 may appear in as few as what days or as long as what days after exposure? Is it 425, 214, 1, 3, or 14, 2? Everyone's saying 214. Okay, I'll mark 214. I think that's right. We'll uh, look at the um, quiz um, results afterwards. Home inspection business owners should perform, oh, sorry, let's try that again. Home inspection business owners should inform and encourage employees and inspectors to blank signs and symptoms of COVID-19 if they suspect possible exposure. Should they disregard? Should they self-monitor for or ignore? Yeah, self-monitor. Okay, next, true, false. Examples of PPE for home inspectors include gloves, goggles, face shields, face masks, and respiratory protection when are appropriate. Well, you could, you, you could uh, say false, but you know, because we really don't wear face shields and face masks and respiratory protection, but I'm gonna mark what everyone is saying. Yeah, true, okay? That's what the course said, and that's what the CDC and WHO say. Some people refer to as blank cases have experienced no symptoms at all. And is that called asynchronic, asymptomatic, or sympathetic? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. Yep. It's asymptomatic right there. We'll mark that. Okay. We have a few more. You ready? Are you still in there? Good. The CDC recommends that people who have symptoms of acute respiratory illness should self-quarantine until they are free of a fever, which is a temperature of what or greater, as well as those who exhibit signs of a fever or any other symptoms. What is the fever temperature? Is it 100.4 Fahrenheit? Is it 103.1 Fahrenheit? Or is it 101 Fahrenheit? And I apologize to all of those who are using the metric system. So let's see. Yeah, boy, you guys are great. Pablo, Richard, Lewis, Frank, Doug, Mark, Andre, James. You guys are awesome. Oh, uh, James, wait a minute. Mm, I think we're going with 100.4, okay? Oh, and also, yeah, I wanted to show you what I was doing to see if it was accurate. And it, it came out pretty accurate to take your temperature. And I don't recommend this, and the CDC doesn't recommend this either, but um, I got my flare infrared camera. So let's see, I wonder what my temperature is. Let's see what my temperature is, let's see. What's my temperature? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Am I 100.4? No. Okay, so I guess I'm okay. Um, let's see. True or false, many countries, states, provinces, and local governments have responded to the 2020 coronavirus pandemic by restricting many businesses from operating. That is true. So please, um, you should have a business attorney 
that you hire, you know, for you know complaints, and they can write a letter, or, uh, help you with your um, business practices, and go over your online agreements and documents, and the way you market yourself, and so many other things. And they probably know the local judges and um, CPAs and things like that. You should have a business attorney. Um, they charge a lot, but they do great things for your business. Um, so I had one, it was fantastic. Whenever I needed an, an issue to be resolved, just went to my business attorney. So your business attorney would know this. You know, can I operate in my state or in my county or in my city? And how do I do that, right? Do I need to carry something with me or am I good to go or am I restricted? Okay, um, so that's true. Many have, yep. Oh, the next one, you guys are so fast. The virus is thought to, you guys are answering the next one. The virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person, including through respiratory droplets. That's fantastic. You guys got it. Okay, next. Home inspectors should be, should not be near. Timothy's first. You got six feet. Lewis, <laughs> you guys are great. Okay, symptoms include, who's the first one? Peter got it, all the answers. Yeah, symptoms typically include all the answers, which is a fever, a cough, and shortness of breath. According to the InterNACHI Code of Ethics, the InterNACHI member shall what? Uh, disobey, need not comply with, may ignore, and shall comply with all government rules. Yeah, shall comply with. And shall is absolutely, definitely will happen. Should is kind of like, oh, may, 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 it doesn't, but shall is a legal term. It will happen. Uh, true, false, worker risk of occupational exposure to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 during an outbreak, may vary from very high, high, medium, and low caution. That is all true, 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 true. It's recommended to wash your hands frequently using soap and water for at least, oh man, you guys are so fast. 20 seconds. We're coming up, three last. The virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person, including between people who are close in contact with one another about six feet. You got really fast. The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to this virus. True. Don got that one first. Uh, safe work practices are types of what controls? Mm, administrative. Yeah. It's not automatic. It's not engineering. Remember, it's like high efficiency air filters in a, in a hospital. So it's administrative control. You think we got everything? Let's, let's grade the quiz, right? What do you think we get? Boom. Congratulations. 100%. You guys, thanks, Peter. Yep. You guys are awesome. Okay, the next thing to do is the final examination. And so you just certify that I am this person. I certify that I am the person taking this course. Um, it tells me that I have visited every page except, oh, I skipped this on purpose. So I didn't touch this one page. It was just begin. It just says, we're going to begin the course. So I have to go back. It, it says, did I complete that page? Nope. It forces me to see every page, right? And if there's a video, it forces me to watch every video. And then I go to the next page. And so I visited that page. Now I can take the final examination. If I take the final exam now, you want to see all the questions of the final exam? Shall I do it? No. So you have to take the final exam in order to pass the course and to download your certificate of completion, which is issued by the only home inspector college that I know of in the whole world. Um, we are an accredited college and we're also a member college of the National Association of Career Colleges in Canada. So if you wanted to take the course, you get a certificate of completion. It's good for um, CEs and you get the logo and you get a bunch of other materials as well. And that's what I wanted to go over with you today during this free webinar on Natchi TV. Really appreciate it. Appreciate the time that you've invested. Uh, stay safe out there, stay healthy, protect others, talk to your co-workers and your employees and your friendly inspector competitors, right? We're a big community and talk to your neighbors too. Remember from a safe distance, get to know your neighbors if you happen to stay home. And if you are home and you're restricted from operating your business, the internet actually has a ton of resources to um, get
get ready for the pent up demand for home inspections that we are expecting after this is all over. Start working on your marketing, your training, and other things. So I am honored to teach you for a little bit about something that's really important. Okay, my name is Ben Gramika from Internet I really appreciate you all attending, uh, watching the video, and listening to our Home Inspector podcast. I'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody.